Hello friends, this video on Laws of Motion Part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that all the you have watched all the videos from Part 1 to 21 before going ahead with Part 22. Now let us study circular motion. As the name suggests, circular motion. So obviously something which is moving in a circle. So motion in a circular path is circular motion. So when we talk of circular motion, it is very important to talk about centripetal force. We discussed earlier also, if you see the very first or second slide where I told that the reason behind motion is a force. Force always causes motion. So when I talk of circular motion, the force which is the cause behind circular motion is the centripetal force. That is the force which makes an object move in a circular path. So the force that makes a body follow a curved path. Because till now whatever we talked about, we talked of straight paths. Now when a body moves in a circular path or in a curved path, there is a force which is involved which makes the body move in this path. So that force is called centripetal. The name itself shows you that it moves in a circular path. Centripetal. Centri comes from the word center of a circle. Centripetal force always acts towards the center. Let us suppose if a body is moving in this way in a circular path somewhat like this. The centripetal force will always act in this direction. So at every point of time the centripetal force would be acting along towards the center of the circle. It is generally denoted by Fc. The subscript C denotes centripetal. Centripetal force is given by mv square by r. mv square by r. Now we already know that force is equal to Okay, so here we see that the centripetal force is equal to mv square by r. We already know that force in general is equal to mass into acceleration. So if we compare the formula for centripetal force with this formula, we find that v square by r is the acceleration here. This v square by r is known as centripetal acceleration. So we can write centripetal force is equal to mass into centripetal acceleration. And what is centripetal acceleration? It is v square by r. Don't worry, in the next slide we'll prove, we will prove how centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared by r. So here we come, we will derive centripetal force is equal to mv squared by r. Now as I told you that centripetal force is equal to mass into centripetal acceleration. So here what we will do is we will try to derive the value of centripetal acceleration. So that will make our work easy. We know, we also know that certain things which, all we, which we already know. Acceleration in general is equal to dv by dt where v is the velocity of any particle. And similarly, velocity is equal to rate of change of position or rate of change of displacement with time. So here let us suppose we denote p as the position vector. Now let us suppose we consider a motion, a circular motion somewhat like this. Okay, let us suppose the position vector is denoted by P. And we consider that the radius of this circle is equal to R. Let us say the position vector is denoted by P. This is R and we say this angle is theta which keeps changing. Correct, so we can write that the position vector at any point, at any arbitrary point on this circle, the position vector will be defined, will can be written as r cos theta, comma r sine theta. You must be aware of that because p is a vector quantity. So any vector can be expressed in terms of its i component and j component that is the x component and y component. So we can write the position vector at any point as r cos theta and r sin theta where r is the radius of the circle and theta is the angular radius of the circle that is theta is the angle which r makes at each point of time. Correct? I hope you understood from where we got this. Let us quickly see from where we got this. 
the position vector p at any point of time can be written as the x component plus the y component or we write it in this form that is px comma py this is how we write any vector now this px if we know that r is the radius of the circle and theta is the angle which r makes at the center then we can write px that the position vector along x axis at any point would be equal to r cos theta and the position vector along y axis let us suppose if this is r if this is the position vector let us say this vector is p so what would be this this would be r cos theta and this would be r sin theta because the magnitude of this is r again so let us suppose if we denote this as p we say the position vector we consider any point say a now what is the position vector of a from the center it is this p so this p can be written as the px component plus the py component so what will be the px component it will be the magnitude of px along this into cos theta so magnitude of this line is r that is radius so we can write px as r cos theta and we can write py as r sin theta so that is why that is how we write p is equal to r cos theta sin theta now we know that velocity vector v is equal to change of position vector with time that is dp by dt now we can write d by dt of r cos theta comma r sin theta since r denotes the radius of the circle which is constant therefore we can take r out and we can say this is d cos theta by dt comma d sin theta by dt now you see we don't know what would be the value of d cos theta by dt so how we can make it easier we can make it simpler by saying that d cos theta by d theta into d theta by dt as you can see this will not make any difference because we were we are multiplying as well as dividing by d theta at the same time it will become easier for us to solve this because we know the value of d by d cos theta by d theta so similarly we will do the here also that is d sin theta by d theta into d theta by dt this will come out to be we know that d by d theta of cos theta would be minus sin theta and what is d theta by dt that is the change of this angle with time that is nothing but angular velocity we denote angular velocity by omega so that also i'll write here that is omega is nothing but the rate of change of the angle this is omega comma d sin theta by d theta would be cos theta d theta by dt is again omega so we can write it as r omega minus sin theta comma cos theta correct so this is the value of v now we want to find out acceleration now again acceleration is nothing by but rate of change of velocity so we can write it as r omega so let's apply the same rule here again again here d by dt of minus sin theta so we will multiply and divide by d theta so this will become d by d theta of minus sin theta into d theta by dt comma d by d theta of cos theta into d theta now we can write it as r omega so d by d theta of minus sin theta is minus cos theta and this is again omega comma this would be minus sin theta and this is again omega so we can again take out omega so this would be r omega square and we have minus cos theta comma minus sin theta so this is the value of the acceleration vector now we want to find out the magnitude of acceleration now we know that again some simple logics or the some or some simple mathematics rule we already know that let us suppose we have any vector let us say we have any vector a 
any vector a if it is equal to if it is represented as a x i cap plus a y j cap then we can represent it as a x comma a y in this way and when we talk of the magnitude of this vector that becomes equal to root over a x square plus a y square. So we will apply this simple logic here also. Here also we are representing a as in the form of this that is we are representing in this equation we are representing it in this form. Now we want to find out the magnitude. So this will be root over a x square plus a y square. Now if you do root over of this thing square so this will again come out to be r omega square and root over cos square theta plus sin square theta. We know cos square theta plus sin square theta is equal to 1. So it will come out to be r omega square. Let's write it. So this will be equal to cos square theta plus sin square theta. So this will come out to be r omega square. So we found that the magnitude of acceleration is equal to r omega square. We also know the relation between linear velocity and angular velocity that is omega is equal to v by r. We already know this relation. Now we will put the value of omega as v by r. So we get v square by r square. So this r and r will get cancelled and we get the value of r acceleration as v square by r. Therefore we proved that centripetal acceleration is equal to v square by r. Now since centripetal acceleration is equal to v square by r, in the very beginning we, so, we said that centripetal force is equal to mass into centripetal acceleration that is m into v square by r. Hence we derived this formula. So I hope it is clear to you now. Some of you must might find some difficulty in understanding this differentiation part because maybe some of you have not covered it in your mathematics now. If it is difficult for you, you can skip it for the time being. But this definition would be useful once you are aware of differentiation. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.